ahead and attempt to um, do this assignment just to demonstrate it for you guys. Um, if you feel pretty comfor in comfortable in Illustrator, then skip this video. Just go straight for the assignment. Um, this video is geared towards more uh, to the students who maybe still need Illustrator practice. And so um, I know a good way to learn is by watching somebody else do it. So that's why I'm making this video. Um, okay, so here's our challenge, and this is a common challenge you're going to get if you go work in the apparel industry. Somebody's going to give you a photograph, or they're going to give you an actual sample, and they're going to say, CAD this up. Usually the next step, they'll say, okay, give us some spin, like give us like five different variations or whatever. So um, our first assignment, right, for this anyways, is to uh, just CAD up this garment as is. And I'm talking about the top, I'm not talking about the pants. Now you'll notice we don't get to see the back, so you're going to have to figure out what the back looks like yourself. Um, one thing you should ask yourself is, um, what kind of fabric is this? Is it stretchy? Is it not? And then am I going to be able to get in and out of this thing? So do I need to add like a closure for the back? So those are important things to ask yourself. Um, okay, so to get started, I'm going to screenshot this and bring it in Illustrator. I'm on a Mac. Um, I am going to hit Command, Control, Shift, 4. And then it changed my mouse. And I can just copy it. And then now uh, when I go to Illustrator, I can create new. And you know, maybe you have it saved. I'm gonna go to print. I wanna do letter size. I like to work in inches. Um, okay. And wait a minute. Okay. Now, um, when I did my screenshot, because I did Command Control Shift 4, it saved it on my clipboard. So it's not saved on my desktop. So all I have to do is hit Command V. So that's a difference. I know there's another way to screenshot where it saves it to your desktop and you can open it in Illustrator as a linked file, but I just think um, saving it to your uh, clipboard is probably a little quicker. Okay, so I'm going to make this smaller now. Notice when I make it smaller, I do not distort the photograph. That would be really bad, especially if we're trying to draw something that's uh, proportional. So to make sure I don't distort it, I am pushing the shift on the keyboard. And then to set it, I need to keep pushing shift, but I need to take my hand off of my mouse. So I'm letting go of the mouse. Now I can move the mouse. I'm still pushing shift. And like once you can move your mouse and it's not changing the size, then you can let go shift. Okay, don't do it at the same time. <clears throat> it will distort your photo if you do it at the same time. Okay, so now there's two ways to do this. Um, you can just draw it from scratch with the pen tool, which is one option, or you can go see if you have a similar CAD in your library and then change that CAD to match. So I'm gonna demonstrate both ways. So I'm first gonna go ahead and try to just draw it from scratch with the pen tool. So I'm gonna zoom in here. I'm gonna hit space bar to kind of pan. I'm gonna get rid of my layers. I don't really need that right now, just to kind of give myself a little bit more space. Um, okie dokie. I'm gonna hit the letter P for the pen tool. And right now I'm looking at my colors. I would like it if I did not have a stroke. You know what? It's, why it's not really working is because um, my picture is still selected. So I'm going to deselect my picture by using the black arrow, just clicking the artboard one time, and that deselected my photograph. I'm going to go back to the pen tool. I'm going to change my fill color to, right now to be clear. I'm going to change my stroke color. I'm going to choose like a bright red just to make it easy to see. I can always go back and change it to a different color later. Okay, so letter P, here we go. I'm going to start at the high point shoulder, and I'm going to click you know, along her shoulder line. Now, I don't really want to copy this guy exactly because it's at an angle on her, but I'm using this to kind of get started. Okay, I'm going to hit the letter P. Um, and let me, by hitting P, you'll notice there's like an asterisk next to the pen tool. So it reset my pen tool. Um, what I think I want to do next is switch to my black tool. The keyboard shortcut is the letter V. I want to copy and paste this thing and make it symmetrical. So a quick way to do that is Command C, Command V. Oops, you know what? I want to. I'm gonna <laughs> reselect it. There we are. Um, only the bottom part was selected. Command C, Command V, and then I'll say Object Transform Reflect. Okay, and kind of line it up so they're aligned. And I'm gonna hold Shift, and I'm just gonna bring it like approximately right here, I guess. 
Now I'm gonna hit the letter P for the pen tool, and I wanna connect these two as I make her neckline. So if I were to click right now, I would be drawing a brand new line, but I don't really wanna do that. I actually wanna continue the line I already have. So I need to hover right on top of the anchor point. And I hope you notice that that little asterisk mark changed. Now the little icon next to the pen tool is a slash line. So that means it's gonna connect something that I already started drawing, which is exactly what I wanted to do. I'm gonna click one time with my left mouse button, and I'm gonna go, I'm kinda of eyeballing her center, and I'm gonna click and drag, pull out some handlebars. I don't want this at a tilt, so I'm gonna hold shift, and that keeps my handlebars straight. I'm just kind of eyeing what looks good. I can always go clean it up later. And now I'll go here, and I'll click, uh, I wanna connect it to um, the other side. Now, do you see my the icon that pops up when I hover over that open anchor point? It's like a little square with a line. It means it'll connect that path, which is exactly what I wanted to do. So I'm just gonna click one time. So you wanna make sure you see that icon to get it to connect. Okay, when I look at it, I can tell it's not symmetrical. So that means I tried eyeballing this anchor point and I didn't quite get it in the middle. I'm gonna hold shift and kind of scoot it. So it looks a little bit, that's honestly good enough for right now. Um, okay, cool. So now I'm gonna look at this garment. Hmm. What would it look like if it was laying flat on a table? It's probably pretty form-fitting. It, it might just be straight. Maybe there's a little body curve. You know, we don't really know. This is where you need some experience. I might suggest going into your closet and grabbing um, some kind of garment that looks similar and laying it flat on your bed. I have worked as a designer. I've seen a lot of clothes before. So I'm actually pretty confident that it does probably have a slight little angle around the waist. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and pick up this anchor point. I'm gonna hold shift to about here. This is what I think the length is. And then I'm gonna hit P again. And I'm gonna go back to this line and I'm gonna add an anchor point. Do you see the plus icon that's on my pen? I'm just gonna click one time. Okay, so I added an anchor point. <laughs> Now I'm gonna take my white arrow, I'm gonna bring it in just slightly. And then I'm gonna go back and I wanna find this anchor point tool. It'll bring out my handlebars. So, and this is handy for anchor points that are already drawn. Normally if you're drawing with a pen tool, you just click and drag, but if you have an anchor point you know, already established, you have to use that tool. Okay, so I pulled out some handlebars just to make the curve, um, you know, just slight, not super curvy, just a slight little angle. Um, okay, this is looking good. Um, let's see here. And then really, I guess the end is just of this uh, piece for now would be the straight bottom. Hmm. Okay, so I might take a break for a minute and kind of focus on her cups. And I'm glad I have this zoom picture here. I'm almost wondering, it might be a different fabric at the top part and then the cups are another fabric. I'm not sure. So I'm gonna take a minute to draw the cups. Um, trying to think the best way. Maybe I should copy over this line. I think, okay, I'm gonna reflect this thing. Object, transform, reflect. Okay, there we go. Okay, Um. let's see, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here. Now, this is tricky, because it looks like my center, I'm gonna pull out my rulers. View, show rulers, there we are. And I'm gonna click and drag from the rulers. This is really my center front. However, I'm gonna put this guy, this is the center front of like the illustration because she's standing at the side. So her right side is gonna feel smaller and her left side is gonna feel bigger because it's slightly turned towards the camera. So that's a little tricky. Um, maybe what I'll do is just kind of trace this angle from the photograph, but then make it smaller to fit my CAD. So I'm gonna hit the letter P. I'm gonna click and drag to get that curve. I'm gonna hit P again. I wanna continue from over here, so I wanna see that slash line. I'm gonna click one time. I'm gonna come down here, click and drag, and then finish it. Do you see that circle? That closes what I drew. I'm gonna hit the letter I so I can grab that same stroke color. Okay, now I'm gonna hit V, and I'm gonna make it smaller. I think I'll hold shift. Okay, this is good. Um, okay, do we have top stitching here? You know what, I, I do believe there is top stitching. It's hard to see. Let me see, is there? Yeah, I do slightly, slightly see it. 
So I want to add top stitching and then there's also another seam down the middle and there's top stitching there as well. So I'm just going to add the top stitching. Okay. And I think it would be a nice part of the design. Okay. So all I have to do is I'm going to say copy and I'm, so what I did to copy, I said command C and I used my white arrow to just select this pathway. If I had picked the black arrow, it would copy the entire shape, but I only want just this top line copied. So I use the white arrow hitting the letter A, command C, and then I love, instead of command V, where I'll paste it in the middle of the screen, I like to hit command F. And F is right next to V, they're very close. And it pastes it just right on top of it, of where I copied it, and all I have to do is hit the up button a couple times. Now, to make this guy a stroke, I can just hit my dashed line. Um, 12 is pretty long, I'm gonna change it to three dash with a gap of two. I kind of like it when the caps are round. Maybe that's even kind of big. I don't know. I can go and change the links later, but this is good for right now. Okay, so I want to go back and draw that center line. So I'm going to hit the letter P and click my seam here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say Command C, Command F, and then kind of move that top stitch. And then I'm going to pick my original line and get rid of the dash line to make it a seam. Um, Okay, this looks pretty good. I'm gonna zoom out to kind of look at where we're at now. Okay, kind of looks like it's a princess seam that actually is going to continue all the way down the garment. So let's look at that. Okay, so I guess I will take this guy. I'm gonna have the letter P and I can hold shift to go straight down. Uh, which I think I'll do. Okay, there we are. And then probably the top stitch should also just go ahead straight down as well. Okay, cool. Um, let's see here. Da, 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 da. So in the image, this seam actually goes ahead and touches the neckline. And now that I've drawn this, I'm wondering, her neckline, it's pretty close to where her shoulders is. So I'm thinking my neckline is way too high. So I'm gonna get my white arrow. I'm gonna you know, I'm going to probably delete that guy for right now. I'm just going to bring it down, I think, a little bit lower. Okay, maybe I'll scoot it. There we are, like right here. And then I need this line to continue. So, you know what? I, uh, perhaps what I should do in that case is I will just get the pen tool and just kind of draw a line for now. Okay. Okay, let's see where we're at. Um, oh, it looks like we have top stitching around her neckline. I can always add that later. It was probably top stitching at the hem. Okay, um, let me just finish her body by making it symmetrical. And to do that, I'm gonna move the photographer right now. Is this weird? What's going on? No, I guess that's fine. Okay. Okay, so you know what? Maybe what I'll do is I'm gonna identify the center, which seems to be right here. And my anchor point is there. I might actually just delete this half again. I'm gonna deselect my anchor point and um, Command C, Command F to paste right on top of it. Object, transform, reflect. Um, yeah, flip it vertical. You can see it's vertical. <laughs> okay, and then now I'm gonna scoot it, but again, I'm holding shift. I let go of my mouse, I'm still pushing shift. I let go of shift. Now to connect this guy, I'm gonna get my pen tool. I wanna to connect this open anchor. Do you see my slash? I think I'm gonna give it a slight dip actually. And then I'm gonna close it off. Do you see that square? That means it's connecting the other line. This is still open up here. So if I wanna connect those two, I can, but I really don't have to actually. Um, okay, and then I'll just take the letter A. I'm gonna hold shift, oops, click. Oh dear, let me zoom in. Letter A, click, click, click. So all these little anchor points are blue, but the other side is white, so I can just hit down for them to come and meet the hem. Um, if I wanna give it a hem, I'll select just this line with my white anchor point, Command C, Command F, up, 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 letter I, copy that stitch line, hand with my space bar, letter A, I'm gonna copy this neckline, hold shift, command C, command F. 
Now, making the neckline is a little bit trickier. Um, I can't just go down because see how it doesn't really work. So I have a trick to show you. If you um, make it, I'm going to change colors real quick so you can see what I'm talking about. There we are. Okay, so make the stroke wider with a thicker stroke, see? So maybe three is okay. You could figure out the right stroke that you like. I'll start with three. And then I'm gonna go object, um, path, outline, my stroke. And then I'm gonna hit the letter I. Now you'll see it changed my stroke with just a stroke with a clear fill. Now it's a clear stroke with a fill. So I'm gonna hit the letter I and I'm gonna change it back to a red line with happens to have a dash. And, and I got the exact shape I wanted. I also got a little extra. I don't need this inside, so I'm gonna get my white arrow, click it, delete, and I don't need that. Oopsies, I do need that part, but I don't need this part. Okay, and then this is a little tall. I can always, you know, I can move it if I want. If I'm worried it's gonna change my shape, I could always cut it. Um, okay, we're getting somewhere. Looks like we need the big baggy sleeves at this point. Um, we can give it a test too to make sure that our fill will work because you know usually with our CADs we want to fill them with a color. So maybe let's give it like a light gray. Okay, and this piece I'm going to move to the back. So I'm going to say Command X, Command B, it's on the back layer. You can also move layers through the layers window. Some people like to click and drag. Um, when you have something selected, there's like a little blue line that'll tell you where it is. See, right now it's the bottom layer and you can just like Let's see if I can move it. You can just move it wherever you want, you know. Um, but I I love going Command X, Command B. I think it's really fast. Okay, I don't really think I need this guide. I'm going to delete it. Can I give my little cups a different color just in case? I can. Now this top fabric, I can't. I might want to um, think about that. Should this because this does look like it's a different type of fabric. So this is a little more intermediate, but I'm gonna show you anyways, because we're in a learning environment. You can open up Pathfinder. And this is a tool that can kind of help you chop shapes that you've already drawn. Uh, I'm gonna look at the top here. Oh, it kind of has a bigger opening than what I gave it. Hmm. So maybe I can move this guy a little over here. And maybe this guy a little over here. Okay, now I want to create this thing's own shape. So it might get a little messy, but maybe what I should do hmm, is I'm gonna delete this line so that it's its own shape. So I'm gonna hit Command X. I'm gonna deselect and I'm gonna hit Command F to paste right on front. So now this object it's not connected see how like this shape it's all connected now this one's like two separate ones i'm going to do that and then the pathfinder tool you can get all these lines and force them to intersect so i'm making it cross over that line i'm going to hit p i'm going to grab that i'm going to make sure it intersect that guy i'm going to hit p find this top one i want to make it intersect all of that's intersecting so it'll chop to make like its own shape um, I'm going to do the same to the other side. I selected it with the white arrow, Command C. Oh, what did I do? It didn't work. Oh, okay, click. Command, oh, Command C is just a copy. Command X will cut it. Command F will paste it. Um, I'm going to hit the P, slash. I just want it to cross. I don't want it to connect. I'm going to hit P. It's kind of weird that it has to intersect. I know that's not very intuitive to people. That's why this tool is a little intermediate, but I'm showing you anyways. Okay, so next what I think I'm going to do is pick my shape. So I want this line and this line and this line and this line. And I guess this overall shell to all interchange. I'm going to get rid of the fill color. So there's no fill. I'm going to attempt to. Let's try that again. No fill, yeah, no fill, and no fill. Okay, so I'm going to shift. Okay, click that to make sure they're all selected. I think everything is selected, is it? Zoom in. Oh, you know what? I should probably grab the bottom of this as well. 
Make new, ah, I don't know why it's not letting me change no fill. That's weird. Okay, one last time. I'm gonna click all these lines. And so, you know, I'm working kind of hard on this CAD. This is why it's important to build a library so you don't always have to draw from scratch. You can just pull something that's already drawn. Okay, here we go. Pathfinder, I'm gonna divide. Now it grouped it all together. It gave it all a clear fill for whatever reason. I'm gonna give it a new color, maybe green. And, um, and sometimes when it groups it, it'll move it to different layers. So it'll look like it's like something else will be deleted, but it's really just underneath what you made. Um, I'm gonna actually ungroup it. Object, ungroup. And if you notice, all the things that, the lines that intersected, they got cut off. The only ones that didn't are the ones that are on the inside. So I can just take my white arrow Click it so that I see the blue anchor point and delete it. And only the blue anchor point will delete. See how it's blue? Delete. And automatically, if I hit delete again, it would delete everything because if you notice, all the other anchor points are blue now. Okay, let's see if I can change colors. I'm going to pick you. Let's make you gray. Um, oh, this is separate. That's interesting. I'm going to go back and play with that. Let's give you a color. Okay, I'll make these two the same. Oh, oh, that's interesting. This is open. Hmm. Okay. Oh, oh, I see. It's the, you brought the waste. Okay. Um, am I able, is the cup totally gone? That's what I'm wondering. Oh, let me see if I can find this cup piece. Hit my X. There is still a cup there. Okay, so command, and undo. I'm going to um, lock this, and I'm going to double click to get out of that group. There we are. There's the cup, so I can still, I still have my cup shape. Make it yellow, or lime. Put this guy, hit letter I, just copy it. Um. Okay, so now, what's going on with this shape? I'll just give this guy, maybe I'll hit I, I'll hit cancel, letter I, just copy that one. This guy, and then letter I, and copy that color, okay. So all our stitching is gone, but it's not really gone, it's just underneath. So I'll just hold shift, grab all of these objects. Oh, that one's locked. Object unlock all. Man X, man B. Okay, cool. That's good. I mean, it looks funny in those colors, but that's basically what the drawing is, I suppose. Um, okay, so now we gotta do that fun, fantastic sleeve. Okay, so this is a big challenge, I know, for students. Uh, okay, I'm just going to put the letter P. I'm going to make sure nothing's selected. So I'm going to put the letter A, click the artboard, nothing selected. I'm going to get rid of that fill color. Leave it green, who cares? Okay, I'm going to click right there to make an anchor point. I'm going to click and drag. I'm going to kind of try to just like make it poofy on purpose. That's kind of a sharp corner. I'm going to kind of follow along here. Come here. You can see there's like an underarm seam a little bit. And then it's sewn into the armhole. So I think I'm just going to leave it like that for right now. Um, we have some drag lines. So the way I like to draw drag lines actually is with the pencil tool. So it does look natural. I'll just kind of go like that. I'm going to hit you. You have to hit me on two of the pencil because it'll like readjust something. So I'm totally okay if this is messy because they're just drag lines. Okay. Maybe there's even like one right here. Uh, and you know, if I wanted, you know, you could add like more here. You can kind of see there's definitely more to be had. Um, maybe that's some shading we could actually add. Okay, object, unlock all. So with my drape lines, or my shearing lines, I do like to use a special brush. I know it's not in here, so I'd have to go open it up, but I can always make my own too. I'll show you how I make it. Let's see here, I'll just go P, draw a straight line. Um, I'm gonna zoom in. I just wanted to have a tip at the end. So I'm gonna take this guy, I'm gonna say object, um, I guess expand. So it made it like a fill and it gave me little anchor points around the outside. And I'm gonna hit P and add a point right here, letter A, and just kind of bring it out so like it's sharper, maybe for a while. 
And then I kind of want to make these little anchor points softer. So I need my anchor point tool to bring out my handlebars. Maybe I went the wrong way. There we go. Yeah. And then I'm going to make this black. And I'm going to put it in my brushes. So window brushes. Okay. I'm using my black arrow. I'm going to click drag and drop it. And this is going to be an art brush. It's like using a paintbrush where you just kind of paint and drag. Um, I would like this change your colorization to tint so it can change colors and will always stay um, black. So if I wanted to change the colors, I could. Um, we'll see how that goes. I don't know. Maybe it's too long. Maybe I should make it shorter. I don't know. I'll test it right now. Okay, so I'm going to click these lines. I'm going to test out the brush I made, see if I like it. Maybe I did. Oh, there it is. I was like, where did my brush go? Okay, cool. There it is. Oh, I see this guy. I didn't have him. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. Um, maybe I probably could have. Oops. Zoom in here. Maybe I should bring it a little shorter. That way it starts like using the shape a little bit more. Let's see if there's a big difference. This might be too much. not really a big difference. Okay, and I'm just gonna hit Command G to group it so they're grouped together. Um, Maybe this one too, I'll do the same thing. Okay, these other guys, I actually might wanna make as little shade spots. So maybe I'll actually delete these, kind of show you what I'm talking about. I have the pencil tool, N for the pencil tool. And I'm just looking for these kind of darker spots. And I think I just wanna make it like a fill, not a stroke. And I'll make it like a light gray or something just to add a little bit of depth. And I'm kind of making them messy on purpose. Oops. Let me always clean that one up. I have the letter I to switch back and forth. And the letter N for pencil. And I to grab that color. Pencil. And then I to grab. So I'm trying to get some shading in here. Maybe a little bit here. Maybe this is too much. I can always change it, obviously. Okay. Okay. Um, why don't we bring it down to our cat and try to get it to be all proportional and whatnot um, and symmetrical. So I'm going to move our photograph again. I'm going to grab all this. I'm going to resize it, but I want to hold shift. Okay. Bring it down over here. Zoom in. <laughs> wow. That's a little bit. Yeah. Oopsies. I think that's pretty good. I might actually turn it a hair. Okay, cool. Um, I'm going to deselect these fills. Because I want to give the same stroke with it. When I made it smaller, it changed my stroke. I'm going to change it back to one. Okay, cool. Um, Let's see here. I'm going to go in here. I'm going to make this like the little, what is it called? Um, Like a tab around the arm. Like a, yeah. let's see here. So I'm going to clean this up to make it a little bit straighter. Maybe I'll hit, there's too many anchor points. So I'll get rid of one. Maybe not that one. Okay, that's better. And again, if I hit the letter P, I can click here, here, go straight. Okay. And I'm gonna zoom in, kind of clean this up. I like how this is kind of a corner. I wanna do the same to this guy. So maybe what I'll do is just scoot him here and bring in this handlebar a little bit there. Okay, so it's kind of like a little cuff at the end. I'm gonna take this line. I realize this line is intersecting the sleeve. I'm gonna select them both and I'm gonna use that Pathfinder tool to uh, divide them. 
Oopsies. You know what? I need to have this guy close, so no worries. I am going to take this line, this anchor point, and put it right here. And then I think I'm going to take this anchor point and draw an extra line so it crosses over. And then same with this one, P, click, and with that to cross over two. And then I like this line, so I'm going to grab this guy, Command C, Command F on front. I'm going to make it have no fill. I'm going to P to make sure it's intersecting. I know it'll get cut off, so I'm not super concerned about that. Okay, now let me try doing the divide tool again. So select, hold shift and select, and then hold shift and get that line, and divide. Okay, cool, good. That's the shape I want, letter I. Let me grab that shape. Um, I'm going to say Command X and Command B. So now for all of these things, I can say I, and then say no stroke, and then maybe I just make this a little darker. So it kind of looks like shadowing. I don't know. Okay. Um, so anyways, you can kind of keep playing around with it until you think, you know, you like it and you're happy with it. And then obviously copy and paste it to the other side. Um, I know I have weird colors here, but I like to work that way just to, so I can really identify and see what's going on. I think my fill lines here, or my um, gathers here, I'm gonna zoom in. They're a little too thick. So I'm gonna make them thinner. Yeah, holding shift, selecting them all. I am using the white arrow panning by holding the space bar. Okay, they're all selected, they're one point. How about if I change it to like 0.5? Okay, command zero. Zoom in. Yeah, I think I do like that. Maybe this one too. Okay. Um, maybe this is up a little higher. It's not on that seam line. Okay. Um, okay, so I'm gonna Copy it, Command C, Command F, Object Transform. Come back. Uh oh, stuck on fonts. Transform, Reflect, Vertical. There. Okay. Can you zoom in? Is that the spot that I want it? Yeah, I believe so. Change the colors how you see fit. If these are <laughs> totally bugging you, that's fine. Um, now I have to do the back. So right now I'm going to hit group, command G to group. And then I'm going to hold option. Do you see a little white arrow that came out? If I hold option, it, it doubles it. I can just pull out a copy. And then if I hold shift, it makes the copy stay aligned. And I let go of the mouse. I'm still pushing shift. I'm still pushing option. Once my mouse is let go, I can let go of the keyboard. I'm going to pan by holding the space bar. Okay, so we can draw the back right now. So, um, you know what? Da, 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 da. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Okay. So for the back, I'm going to double click just to ungroup it. Uh, let's see here. I don't need a lot of this, right? What I can do is, well, one, I'm going to double click again. I'm going to hit the white arrow. I don't think I need that piece, do I? I might need it. Okay, let's see. Hmm. I think why don't I group this all to be one piece just to start. Let's see if that if I can do that. So I'm going to hit letter A and I'm selecting right in the middle. I'm going to zoom in because I know I have to get in close. Letter A, holding shift, holding shift and clicking all these pieces. I believe they're all selected. I'm not selecting the stitches. I'm going to see with my pathfinder if I can unite them. Yeah, I can. So this is all one piece. Okay, that's way easier for me to work with. This neckline, I'm not super excited that I have three, but that's my fault for drawing it like that. Anyways, I'll hold all three. I'm gonna hold shift with my white arrow and I'm gonna bring my neckline up. And you know what, maybe I'll just hit P negative and get rid of the two outer ones. And then again, go and grab that anchor point tool. To click and drag. Um, there it is, now I just have one, that's easier. Oh gosh. I might just delete those. Delete this. 
And then the back, again, we don't know what the back looks like. So maybe I think it would be interesting if the back did have a seam straight across. Because see how it kind of ends right here? So maybe that should be part of it. Um, I'm going to and just do a line straight. So then maybe this stitching. Hold shift, hold shift, and come down. And then I can hit Command C, Command F, and click that up a little. Hit I and grab my anchor point. Um, okay, almost there. So now I'm going to grab this back. I'm going to hit Command C, I'm going to hit Command V, and I'm going to bring it over here. And yet, what I could do, I could select this thing, and I can use my align tool if I wanted. So I could line them both to the bottom, and I guess to the left. Oh. I'm going to undo. Okay. Yeah, that looks fine. Okay, and then I'll say Command X, Command B. So it's on the very bottom layer. Uh, usually I make this kind of like a dark gray just to show that it's like the underside. Because if you're laying a garment flat on the table and it has a low neck, you're going to see the back side if the back is higher. So it's important to draw it like that. Okay, cool. So here we go. I think the last step is just changing the colors so that it looks presentable. But how long did that take me? I don't know. You guys can look right now at the time clock. Um, my next video is I'm going to do the same assignment, but I'm going to pull a cap in my library. And it'll be interesting to see which way is faster.